Colby takes a strike. Second team all SEC selection a year ago. Went hitless in four trips last night with a strikeout. Snapped a six game hitting streak. But she's still hitting 17 of her last 19 games. And Harrison gets ahead 0 and 2. Colby coming off a big weekend against LSU, 5 for 11. Four of those five hits went for extra bases, including a three-run triple in the sixth inning of that Monday finale that tied it up for Florida. Gators ultimately walked off in eight. What a wacky weekend that was, huh? There's been a lot of wacky softball, I feel like, in the past few weeks. This weekend's already been wacky. Six of the top ten falling yesterday, and this weekend's just getting started. Top 10 went three and six last night. Washington, the 10th ranked team, off this weekend. Slapped foul wide of third, and none of them played each other either. Oklahoma had the loss at home to BYU. Tennessee was run ruled by Mississippi State. We'll have game two of that series in Starkville coming up after us. Oklahoma State, LSU, Georgia, and of course Florida here. All went down on Friday night. One, two again. Colby lays off. Must have been tempting. And the big crowd here in Como wanted it. And this has been a new pitch for Harrison, something that Coach Larissa Anderson has worked with this arm on all off speed has been the change for her. That's always a challenge coming in season after season in the circle, trying to bring something new or at least polish what you have. That's been the addition for her as the off speed. Was an issue for Lauren Krings last night, and Florida's doing a good job again this evening with two strikes hanging in there, fouling off tough pitches. Harrison has struck out 14 in the SEC across 16 and a third conference innings to this point. But mentioned the earned run average, which is uh, just a little over two for the season, is over five in the SEC. A lot of speed at the top of the order for the Gators. It's so much threat in the one, two, three with Falby and Wallace, Otis. Wallace having 26 stolen bases on the air. Back to the circle. And Falby is retired after an eight pitch leadoff at bat. What are you looking for from Sierra Harrison? We've already seen the change up, right? A new pitch that's added to the repertoire. I think the thing that makes that pitch so devastating is the fact that she hammers up in the zone. She's got three different levels of the rise ball. She tunnels that pitch so sharply. Really energetic in the circle. This is a defense that loves to play behind this arm. Locates the ball well. Here's Skylar Wallace. Reigning SEC Player of the Year. At least statistically, she is quite plainly the best hitter to ever wear a Gators uniform. We could fill a whole broadcast with just Skylar Wallace. I feel like such a stud, the, the career development she's had over the course of the last handful of years. It's been amazing to watch her develop at the plate. Harrison out 0-2 on the second straight Gator to start the first inning. Yeah, Tim Walton. Went into great detail with me a few weeks ago about the development of Wallace. And I, I asked him, I said, what's changed the most with her? And he said nothing about her skill set. It was all about her mentality and her maturity. She's a kinder teammate now. Kinder to herself. And she'll need that kindness because she swings through a rise ball. Filthy location from Harrison. My goodness. This is part of the tunneling of this location. The fact that she can bring it in the strike zone, she can elevate it to the letters, and this one in the eyeballs. One of the toughest hitters in college softball. Another tough hitter behind her in Corby Otis. Maybe overshadowed sometimes by all the big names in this Florida lineup. Transfer from Louisville, where she was a second team All-American a year ago. And She's pumped up those numbers even more this season. On base percentage at 581 coming in. Third highest in the country. 
Skylar Wallace, her teammate, leads the way. And we talk a lot about Wallace's speed, but Otis was a high school sprinter in her own right. Take a look at this pitch location. We're starting to get to know the zone right now. Both of these arms will have to settle in and see what they're going to get away with. That's a screwball in the inner half. It's like a ball off the plate, and she gets the call. And why not go right back to it? She doesn't end up getting the strike there, but this is part of early innings, too, Nate, is just figuring out for both of these pitchers how their game plan can evolve. Two one to Otis. Caught the outside corner off speed two and two. And Larissa Anderson told us she's given Sierra Harrison and Julia Crenshaw, her junior catcher, the freedom to do some of that. Yeah, that was an interesting point. Just the, the battery between Harrison and Crenshaw. And she specifically mentions the connection between these two. She said, just in the past week, I'm I'm just calling what type of pitch. They're gonna tell you what location they want. How about that piece of two strike hitting from Corby Otis lunging out to poke it into right field. That's her third hit in four trips in this series. High IQ hitting. This is an off speed on the outer part of the plate. She's seen this pitch once. That's the second time she gets peppered a change up. Wasn't hit hard, but enough to get the job done. Otis has 10 steals and 11 tries this year. Not quite as high as Paul B. or Wallace in front of her, but no slouch of the base pass. And here's Jocelyn Erickson. Hammered to center field. Honnold goes back at the wall. It's gone. Jocelyn Erickson returns to the starting lineup in style, and it's 2-0 Gators in the first inning. Transfer from Oklahoma, Jocelyn Erickson has stepped into this program and found her home. This is dead center field, deepest part of this ballpark, a 220. I think this lands somewhere around the 240 mark, right on the berm. Unbelievable contact. So much maturity to see what happens in three at-bats before her. Step in with a game plan. We've talked about the runners left on base for the Gators. She cashes it in right there. Reagan Walsh now with two down, nobody on. Lord able to jump out early again. First inning has been problematic for Missouri in the SEC this year. Tigers have out, been outscored 18 to six now in the 14 first innings they've played to this point. But the onslaught just continues from Erickson who leads Florida across the board in conference games, best average, OBP, slugging. In fact, the OPS coming into the weekend was third in the league, just behind Madison Kennedy of Mississippi State and Bree Ellis of Arkansas. <laughs> Two strike delivery to Walsh. Swing and a miss, chased it up. So Harrison K's a couple of Gators, but Jocelyn Eric. He trusts her intuition with this team. She's got her finger on the pulse. Really good connection with some senior leadership here that keeps her honest just on the state of this group, how they're feeling. This has been a, a road warrior team that has struggled with recovery, trying to get rested. I think she's happy to be home. This team is happy to be on their home turf. Just be able to take a breath. One ball, one strike on Jenna Laird. 1-0 for two with a walk, a strikeout, and drove in a run on a sacrifice fly last night. Tied the game 2-2 in the second. Florida went up 3-2 in the third, and that's how it stayed. Base hit through the left side. Laird is aboard to lead it off. 17th straight game that she has been on. Ava Brown, the freshman, takes over in the circle. One of two youngsters who carry the load for the Gators. Right-hander from Montgomery, Texas. And her 17th start of the year. They're not just any youngsters, to be fair. First pitch strike to Alex Honnold. David Brown, the uh, 2023 National Gatorade Player of the Year at Lake Creek High School. 
What are you looking for, Aaron? It's almost like having a fifth infielder in the circle because she uses her defense and she fields her position so well. She's not scared to hammer the strike zone, which is why you'll see some balls put in play. But the thing that makes her so spicy is the fact that she can throw three speed. This is already hard enough as a hitter to defend two. You throw in a third and you've got movement with the curveball rise. Honnell jammed into left for Corby Otis. Sunglasses glinting for the first out. Brown the last two years went 81-0 at uh, Lake Creek High. One of the first two state titles in any team sport in school history. And as compared to some other freshmen, you don't see as big a gap between her overall numbers and her SEC numbers to this point. Obviously, a higher ERA in the league. Smothered by Erickson, that keeps Laird at first base, 1-0 on Gallagher. But it seems like these Florida freshmen have gotten comfortable quicker than is typical. And Gallagher hit by the pitch, so Missouri has two on with one out. And that was the issue for the Gators last night. Five walks and four hit batters. It's starting to look like deja vu, right? I, that, that really was the story for Florida. Just it, they were their own worst enemy yesterday, and it started in the circle. The free bags given up, both between walks and hit by pitches. Some defensive challenges for them, and frankly, Mizzou just taking advantage, taking, taking what they were given. Ball one to Kara Daly, who Larissa Anderson singled out in the discussion about being more aggressive earlier in at-bats that she feels like Daly all too often lets the best pitch of the at-bat go by. She went 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts last night, but does bring some power to Missouri's lineup. She mentioned Daly just being one of those hitters, being one of those bats that thinks that she has to hit all the time both in preparation, just constantly in the cages, constantly swinging to iron some things out, and two in the box, just unable to take a pitch. Keep the ball in the zone. That has been her challenge for 19, is to see the ball in the strike zone. Browns 1-2. Inside, Erickson back picks. Laird baited her into the throw, but slid head first into third. So she can't come in to score. Still, it's a rare Erickson error who has been statistically the best catcher in the country this season. And Missouri now has second and third. Uncharacteristic, right? Very uncharacteristic for Jocelyn Erickson behind the plate. Laird stepping off the back. This is a huge jump. Look how far she gets off second base. She baits the throw from the lefty, Jocelyn Erickson. And it's wide. It's errant. Keep in mind that... Went out to a 2-0 lead over the first two innings before the Tigers tied it. See Erickson's track record this year. Just one steal against her in 12 attempts. Look at those numbers. 11, Unbelievable. 12. Yeah, that... She's been such a force behind the plate. My goodness, the, the leadership from a sophomore transfer. Bailey cranks it back foul into the Missouri bullpen. And you know that's a play she can make. You know that the decision making for Jocelyn Erickson is there, but it looks like she just got caught on her heels. Almost surprised at the decision making from Jenna Laird at second base. Well taken by Erickson, the count goes full. First base is open. Abby Hay is on deck for Missouri. The payoff. Bounces in. Erickson keeps it in front, but Kara Daly is aboard with a walk. To your point, Aaron, good discipline shown by Daly in that plate appearance. Yeah, all together right now, I just, it feels like Mizzou has something extra a little bit extra juice in the tank aggressive base running really solid reads with that throw from behind the plate and then you're already seeing the patience the hit by pitch and then the walk from Kara Daly and Daly struggled with seeing the ball out of the zone being able to take those pitches that are wide so here's the freshman Abby Hay 
Big spot for her, just her eighth career start in college. Only had a couple of starts in non-conference before getting into SEC play. Dealt with a wrist injury that kept her from being the first choice DP the way Larissa Anderson expected. Just getting her strength and then her timing back, but she's three for 11 across her first five starts in the league, including a homer. And she struck out just twice against three walks, the third of which came last night. Are these misses too far outside the zone with two strikes to tempt Missouri? I think they're competitive misses. I think right now, Brown, a freshman, is just not wanting to miss too sweet, which is fair. Hey, waves and misses. Big strikeout for Brown to get the second out in his first inning. This, though, this location is what you're looking for. She lowers this ball. This is the same on the outer corner, tight spin, a curveball moving away from Abby Hay, but she lowers it to the knees and finally gets the bite. It's a really good adjustment by the freshman arm. Abrascato swinging to the first pitch. Erickson makes the catch to end the inning. Ava Brown loads up the bases with one out, but gets that consistency. Ava Brown, the pitcher, leads off in the second inning for Florida. She had a homer leading off the second inning last night. So much success for Tim Walton, who's a storied coach within our game. He's got a lot of new support with him on the staff this season as well. Alumni Francesca and Aya joined this season. We've seen a lot of alumni join their alma mater on the coaching staff this year. It's been fun to watch staffs grow. Chelsea Dobbins joining this staff as well. One and two. It was funny talking to Tim Walton about Chelsea Dobbins, who came in after eight years at North Carolina as the pitching coach. He said, you know, with two freshmen, sometimes in the bullpen during practice, it's as much about living away from home, doing laundry, <laughs> yeah. school. It is. Brown cranks it foul. Donna Pop actually called Coach Tim Walton and raved on Chelsea Dobbins, said she's got a, a head coach style personality, sees the game in a really unique way. I think the biggest thing for Coach Walton and finding a fit for that role was that he didn't need an evolution. He didn't need a, a coach to step into this program and really rip it up from the roots and change a lot of things. He, he said, we, we just need to be more polished. We need someone that can come in and breathe a, a little bit of fresh air, a new life into our pitching staff. But not rock the boat. I think that's... That's pretty fair. Goes full on Brown. And clearly it's gone well because Tim Walton mentioned those two freshman pitchers and the pitching staff as a whole as the group that's most exceeded his expectations so far this year. Not easy for those two freshmen in Brown and Rothrock, even if they are the last two Gatorade National High School Players of the Year in 2022 and 2023 to come in against this level of competition. And he said even in the fall, when they're facing Florida's own hitters. This is a great Gators lineup, third highest scoring in the country. That's a level of failure that those two have probably never encountered in their lives. A yeah, clear system for Tim Walton. This is the coach that has had a lot of success over the years, being in Gainesville. This is high, and Ava Brown works a nice walk. Another good leadoff at bat, Fulby, uh, Ended up bouncing back to the circle, but she saw a lot of Harrison pitches starting the first inning. Just going to help everybody else behind her. Number 29, right fielder, Kate Tisler. There's the duo of Brown and Rothrock. Tough to take too much issue with those numbers. You know, bringing in these two freshmen, he knew the impact that these arms would have on this staff. Right? He, he knew the, the career that would unfold for both of these arms, but they're still freshmen, right? And that can always be a hit or miss of the type of impact they can have in year one. And 
he shopped the portal. He was very honest with us about that. He said, I struggled in the portal. I, I wanted to get a seasoned arm, a veteran arm to join the staff, and I couldn't, couldn't get it done. Kissler foul territory. Long way to go for Daly, and she makes the catch. Up into the bright sky in Columbia this afternoon. And that gets Kissler for the first out of the second. Really nice job. Third base. Daily tracking this ball down. You got the sun. It's a high sky, not a cloud out here. And she's able to track that down. But back, back to that transfer portal, because I, I really enjoyed hearing Tim Walton talk about the use of the transfer portal and prepping for this season. And a lot of veteran arms in the portal, they, they felt the pressure with the incoming freshmen and knew that it would be a battle. And, Again, he, he was honest in how the transfer portal works for him. He said, I, if I've got to have people that need a cultural fit. I've, I've got to go into the portal and look for somebody that wants to feel like they're searching for a new home, not just chasing for playing time. And it is sometimes, it takes a, it takes a sixth sense to be in the portal and see who could be a fit. Jocelyn Erickson, an incredible fit for this team. Boy, what she's done since making the move over to Florida. One strike pitch to Ariel Kowalewski. He mentioned if there's one thing that coaches I think do like about the portal, it's that sometimes it can be a more mature recruiting process, which is the word he used because players maybe have a better sense of what is totally. and isn't important than they did coming out of high school. Totally. Right, they know the things to look for, the questions to ask of, what you know, is this really going to be a fit for us? One ball, two strikes. Still some youngsters on this roster outside of the portal additions, not just those two freshman pitchers, but Kowalowski here batting in the eight hole, the freshman. Mia Williams, who was at second base for Florida last night in the opener. Just off the outside corner. To your point again, Julia Crenshaw, just seeing what she can get back there from Stephen Gold, our home plate umpire. Yeah, both of these batteries settling in through the first full inning. Trying to nibble at the corners, see what they can get away with. Rounded left side, layered on the backhand, goes the short way to Gallagher for the second out. Kowalowski aboard on the fielder's choice with two down. Julia Crenshaw didn't come in as a catcher, junior from O'Fallon, Missouri, a highly touted recruit. Number two in the nation by extra inning softball coming out of Fort Zumwalt West a few years ago. Didn't get much playing time at all. Only two starts as a freshman. That all changed last year when she started all 61 Tigers games. Still only 35 of them behind the plate. She also had 26 starts at second base. Somebody who's uh, done whatever's asked. Bernard takes a strike. Bernard kind of fits into that boat as well. Junior from Palm Beach Gardens, who only got four starts last year. Did some pinch running. This season just got her first start of the year, Monday night. Played a big role, scored the game-winning run, and the Gators' dramatic eight-inning victory over LSU to win the series. One for six with a double so far in the SEC, Bernard. Kowalewski at first with two down. Hasn't always been pretty for Florida. Certainly could see that in the, uh, the wackiness like we talked about last weekend in Gainesville against LSU, but still... The Gators have won each of their first four SEC series this year. My goodness, the past two weeks have been wicked. My head's spinning trying to keep up with all of it. That one just missed. Harrison took off her <laughs> she base guard off, and everything. Yeah, she ripped off the mask. She wanted this call. 
This is an off speed. You can see the, the lower body and the arms slow down, and she does not get the punch out. Payoff. Swing and a miss. So after Harrison was denied the strikeout on the 2-2 pitch, she gets it on the 3-2 pitch, her third of the game. To the bottom of the second inning, Missouri trails Florida 2 to nothing and brings the bottom third of its order to the plate. In Crenshaw, Dodge, and Langer against Ava Brown. Nate Gatter, Aaron Miller back with you from Como. Missouri loaded up the bases against Brown in the first inning, thanks in part to a walk and a hit batsman. But Brown was able to wiggle out of it with a strikeout and a foul out. Crenshaw floats it down the left field. Line of fair ball in front of Otis. She holds up with a leadoff single, and there's traffic on the base pass right away against Ava Brown again. That's a change for Crenshaw. She typically is her best with two strikes. Just last weekend when I was covering Mizzou, she was batting zero on first pitches. And this, again, the challenge that Coach Anderson had for this team was be aggressive early. And uh, I think Julia Crenshaw just did that. Now here's Maya Dodge, her sixth SEC start. Shows bunt. Did she pull it back in time? Evidently so. Two balls and no strikes. Dodge just two out of 14 without an extra base hit in league play so far, and she struck out nine times. But she did have a couple of walks and worked the count well in all three of her plate appearances in last night's opener. You know she can do it, at, certainly at the mid-major level she did. OPS better than 1360 last year as the Missouri Valley Player of the Year at Northern Iowa. Inside, ball four. So Brown even working against the bottom part of Missouri's order. Issues a four-pitch walk to Dodge, and now she has to deal with Kaylee Langer, who has been one of Missouri's best hitters in SEC yeah. play. I like the choice of her being in that nine hole as well. It, she acts as that kind of spark at the bottom of the order, turns the lineup back over, and then you've got the thread of speed at the top of this lineup, one through nine, with Laird, Honnold, and Gallagher. But how about the consistent story? The hit by pitch, already two walks so far through the first time in the order. This is what we saw yesterday. Mizzou taking what they were given. Florida pitchers have combined to throw seven innings so far in this series. They've walked seven and hit five. Almost two free base runners per inning. And Langer Bunts it back toward the circle. Brown has it. No play to double off either runner. But a rare miscue from Langer, who has been very reliable for Missouri in her sophomore season. A huge base is loaded in the first that Florida got out of. And right now, Brown works her way with a pop-up. After giving the first two bases. Laird down the right field line, long way to go, and it's past the outstretched glove of Kissler. Crenshaw will score. They wave home the next runner to make it a tie ball game in the second. Crenshaw and Dodge come home on a two-run double by Jenna Laird, her first extra base hit of SEC play all year. Knots it up for Mizzou. This is perfectly placed. Hitting behind runners, she pulls the ball, she gets the barrel out in front and extends through this and almost, almost has the catch is Kissler in right field. Gives chase. And now we're knotted up at two. So unbelievably consistent is Jenna Laird. No matter the pressure, no matter the situation, she is so calm at the plate. One ball, one strike on Alex Honnold. Laird was actually recruited 
coach was at Hofstra. It's pretty cool to see the connections, the, the stars that aligned with some of these athletes. Larissa Anderson. Off the corner, two and one. Larissa Anderson and Jenna Laird met when Laird was only nine years old. Used to come to the facility where Anderson and her husband would give hitting lessons, came to camps at Hofstra, and had actually committed there. When she started getting looks from power conference schools, and it just sort of serendipitously worked out that Anderson made the switch to the SEC just in time. And I never want to be disrespectful to Hofstra in this conversation, but it's hard to imagine Jenna Laird anywhere other than a power right. conference school. What she's done at Mizzou has been pretty special to witness. Without a doubt, a leader of this team, the connection between her and Larissa Anderson, very special. She said, I, I almost, I looked to Jenna to give me the pulse of the team, to tell me the truth about where we are as a group. She's never negative. She's always honest. She's kind of that inside plug to the temperature of the group. Coach mentioned still talking to Jenna's parents frequently. They're at every game. Honnold, left field, Otis back, looks up, it bangs off the wall. Laird will score, Alex Honnold gives Missouri the lead with an RBI double. So much power. The production of this order is exactly what you're seeing in that one, two, three punch for this team. Honnold has been so consistent in that two hole. Such a perfectionist at the plate, sometimes to a fault. But that is how much she takes pride in her craft offensively. So even keel, understands the moment, doesn't allow it to get too big, and comes up huge for the go ahead RBI. First in the SEC 18. Ball one to Maddie Gallagher. Alex Honnold hit Florida pretty hard last March in Gainesville as well. Had four hits, including a couple of homers. Drove in six in that series. Maddie Gallagher is another Hofstra recruit. A lot of growth over the years for Gallagher. This is one of those athletes that coached, which is she could have coached for all four years. That's how much of a pleasure it has been to have her on the squad. You mentioned the growth. Last year, she was a capable hitter and, and got on base better than 37% uh, of the time, but only had four extra base hits all the year. This season, she's still been tough to strike out, but not only the walks, the power numbers have well have increased dramatically and makes it viable for Larissa Anderson to use her in that three hole. A 3-12 hitter all season, but runners in scoring position. It jumps up to 436. She's a stud in these moments. Lifted to left, down in front of Otis. Honnold gets a late wave, but didn't want to commit to it. Gallagher's caught up between first and second. Honnold's creeping off of third. Honnold will score, and nobody's home at second base. Death by a thousand cuts for Florida last night, and this feels like maybe the first or second cut today. Almost a 440 hitter with runners in scoring position. She peppers this in the 5-6 hole, draws the throw, and look at the base running. The job of Gallagher was not finished just after the hit. So heads up on the base pass and forces Florida's defense to make a decision. Huge for Maddie Gallagher, huge. Ball one on Kara Daly. Coming into the weekend, Missouri was three and eight this year when the opponent scored first. The Tigers came from behind to win last night in the series opener. And they've already turned a 2-0 deficit into a 4-2 lead just a couple innings in today. Both coaches consistently told us this week, no lead is safe. Three balls, no strikes on Daly. 
You mentioned how good the base running was. How about Honnold timing that up perfectly, too, for when the ball was released by the second baseman, Walsh, and going to a left-handed first baseman in Gels, who's going to have to rotate her lower body all the way around to throw it home. Daly draws ball four, but that couldn't have been timed up better. I will die on this hill, Nate. I think that base running is the most underrepresented portion of our game in broadcasting. I don't think we talk about it enough. It can win you ball games and it can lose you ball games. And how about this? With the addition of the replay now yeah. and the challenge, how many times we have seen that call change a game? Runners leaving early. Kissler the catch. Gallagher gallops up to third. Abby Hay retired, and another big two out at bat coming with a couple of ducks on the pond for Stefania Abrascato, who popped up in foul territory to the catcher Erickson with the bases loaded in the first inning. Just the third SEC start for the freshman Abrascato. Another New Yorker. The number 13 player in the 2023 class, according to extra inning softball. You got to say New Yorker, Nate. You got to say it right. You got to sell it, New Yorker. Could you get, yeah, just one more time for the people at home <laughs> to clip Yorker. that. New Yorker. Come on, clip it. I walked into it. Abrascato had Missouri's very first hit of the ball game last night. Florida didn't give up a hit with Keegan Rothrock in the circle until there was one out in the sixth inning. Missouri managed to score a couple of second inning runs without a hit and ultimately pushed six across on just three hits to win the game. And there's a 3-0 strike on Abrascato. Already 50 pitches for Ava Brown coming up next. Walked three, hit one. That story just continues and Missouri has cashed in. There's another walk, or fourth. You gotta wonder how long the leash is here. What gives? It's been a combination of both hard hits from Mizzou and free bags. Four walks, hit by pitch. When do you make the call? Showed you that graphic earlier that the freshman Rothrock and Brown have accounted for the vast majority of Florida's innings this year. Mackenzie Wooten has thrown a few out of the bullpen. And there's a strike over the outside to Julia Crenshaw. Senior Wooten is readying. She was out there in the bullpen in the sixth inning when Florida's lead slipped away last night, ultimately came in and finished the frame, but the damage had been done. Crenshaw had a single and came in to score. Leading off this inning. Marissa Anderson told us she really wasn't thrilled with Crenshaw. Thought she could do more and benched her on Wednesday in Missouri's midweek victory on the road over Drake. Popped up near the left field line. Otis is there and the inning is over. So Missouri strands the bases loaded. My goodness, softball is going to be a gauntlet. Top of the Florida order in the third. And Sierra Harrison gets ahead, nothing and one on Kendra Falby. Also, just the matchup rotation. It's already tough to juggle. I mean, look at all these in the top 10. Texas and Oklahoma sitting at one and two. They will be in the SEC next year. There's already five teams there wow. in the SEC, and it's going to be seven counting Texas and OU. Unreal. Harrison starting her second trip down Florida's lineup card. Falby tapped back to the circle their first time. And she's behind, no balls and two strikes, just as she was in the first inning. Now 0 for 5 with a strikeout in the series, but by batting average, the third leading hitter in Florida history, behind only Skyler Wallace and Amanda Lorenz. Awfully good company to keep. Falby's tough with two strikes, a 362 hitter. When she's got two on her, a lot of barrel control, a sharp eye, just very patient at the plate. Oh, 
Change up tap to third. Daly has to be quick and Balvey beats it. Infield single for the Gators speedster atop the lineup. And she's aboard to lead off the third, which brings Skylar Wallace to the plate as the potential tying run. So tough to defend speed. If you do not field, throw, and catch perfectly, you don't have a shot against the speed of Falby. She's so deadly with the legs. Strike one on Skylar Wallace, who struck out her first time. Something that, of course, does not happen often. And she chased that rise ball up high, which I know you picked up on as an emphasis for Harris in the first trip down the Gators lineup. Yeah, Wallace striking out on the rise ball is, is interesting. I think that one striking out rare for, for her. She's got such, such a eye, a patience, just very keen on the strike zone. But where her trouble has been has actually been the drop ball. Tim Walton mentioned that as part of the reason for LSU's success against her last weekend. Wallace rips it to right, played by Langer for the first out. Has been more of a struggle for Skyler of late in SEC play, certainly by her standards. One for ten against LSU, statistically the worst SEC series of her Florida career. And now one for five with a double and a walk so far this weekend. To be fair, that ball was roped. But she's the first out in the third inning anyway. One on one out in the third after Missouri put up four to take the lead in the bottom of the second. And Corby Otis settles in. She had a single and scored in the Gators two run first. Came in on that two run homer off the bat of Jocelyn Erickson. Already three hits in four trips for Otis, including a double. There's something about Corby Otis that I really enjoy watching. She's so magnetic. Just the swagger, the confidence. She moves very methodically in the box. It's just mesmerizing to see her work. One ball, one strike. Dare I say this, it kind of gives you like a little bit of old school baseball, just like how, how she's kind of got the Clydesdale um, kip on that front leg. She's got the open stance, really loose with the arms, the hands. She's very reactionary and urgent when she decides to pull the trigger. Back our way, one ball and two strikes. There is something intimidating about a hitter who's so loose and quiet in the box. Yeah. Tim Walton had some interesting comments about learning how to coach her. Obviously, the transfer from Louisville. But, you know, what works well is that it's not just an I talk, you do kind of program. That sometimes you talk and we do. And that Corby is somebody who communicates with him. And when they have that information flowing both ways, they can make adjustments together. He said he's learned to be a better Corby coach. <laughs> an interesting style that he has as a head coach. I think that comes through in the way he coaches specifically player to player, but again, back when he was hiring and the staff was growing. Hard, hard hit to second. Gallagher lost her glove. Jenna Laird nearly finished the double play anyway. Otis beats it. We'll get a second look at this. Gallagher loses her glove and ends up just holding the ball in her bare hands. right off the end of the bat glove falls off completely of Gallagher and still makes the fielders choice the force out at second base so athletic it's ridiculous so Otis aboard with two out and now Jocelyn Erickson
Erickson Homer in the first inning was her ninth of the year, her fourth in 14 SEC games. Didn't waste any time, jumped right on the first pitch from Harrison. Now Larissa Anderson calls time to go out to the circle. That was sort of her point to her own hitters. Sometimes the first pitch is the best one you're going to get. Aqua punch. Was your approach different at all on the first pitch than the middle of the at-bat? I liked the first pitch. I was aggressive early. I like to swing early and often. You know, I moved around in the order, and I think as a leadoff at times when I was up at the top, you got to be more information-driven, which means working the count deep, seeing some pitches early, especially early in the ball game. But I did. I like swinging early. You do have sort of more responsibilities as a teammate in the leadoff spot, I suppose. You do. It comes with a little bit extra, extra order, yeah. Would you ever get a joking complaint, even if you, you know, roped a double off the wall on the first pitch that, you know, <laughs> hey. the three and four hitters are like, come on now. Hey, you can't complain. If you're if you're successful, you can't complain. But two, that comes down to the scout, right? If you know you're going to see an arm that's going to hammer the strike zone early and often, be ready for it. Be ready to pull the trigger. To your point about being able to prepare for an arm, you know, Tim Walton talked about that is one of the real strengths of this team, that he thinks they prepare really well. They're detailed. Obviously, now, as compared to even 10 years ago, let alone 20, there's so much more video out there. Oh. Just since I graduated, there's so much more information out there, both on the game, the physicality of these young women. We talked with Larissa Anderson about their preparation. They do hydration testing, a saliva test, to make sure that each one of their athletes is properly hydrated with their sodium levels, their electrolyte levels. Just how can this team be their best? It's unreal, the data that are at the fingertips of these staffs. Erickson coming off a three for eight weekend with three walks against LSU in Florida's last series. And of course, the weekend before that, she dominated Mississippi State. Went five for 11. Three of those five hits were home runs. She drove in nine. She's had multiple hits in seven out of 13 SEC games and already won in this one. Otis at first with two down, another Harrison payoff. Erickson stays alive yet again. As though it's not enough to beat Florida's best hitter in SEC play, well carrying all the mental burden of catching. She's also been probably the best defensive catcher in the country this season. Certainly the most dangerous arm, the way she controls the running game, even proactively creates outs on back picks. Tim Walton said that's not something they did a lot the last handful of years. And so in the fall, he told her, just whip it around. Whenever you want to throw it, throw it. Partially to give her the confidence, partially also to get the infielders used to the ball whizzing at them. Got to stay on your toes. You notice the momentary pause there between Harrison and Crenshaw again to reiterate the interesting development between this battery in the past week and a half, two weeks or so, is that Larissa Anderson is allowing these two to determine location. All she is doing from the dugout is calling pitch type, speed, spin, release. But the battery is the information holder based on what Crenshaw is seeing in the box. Where are they standing? What are they biting? What is the umpire awarding? That's a lot of confidence that she has between Harrison and Crenshaw. Erickson works the nine pitch walk, so she's aboard and it pushes Otis into scoring position at second for Reagan Walsh.
Walsh had a strikeout back in the first inning. Still two out of four in the series, including a double and an RBI. We've talked about some of the development on both sides. Walsh certainly an example of that. Look at the OPS, 705, 923, 1330 across her three years in the orange and blue. Home run jump is wild. It popped up. This one might be playable. Daly has it, and the inning is over. So Florida. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we have, but I mean, you got a lot of innings and a lot of ball, and if we got a couple outs to get, we got opportunities to be able to score, and, you know, it's great that we responded and being able to have a lot of quality at-bats in that second inning. Beautiful day for softball, full stadium, and it's alumni day. How special is this for you and your program? You know, it, it's so huge to have them come back, but also for our current players to realize that, you know, they laid the groundwork for this program, and they're the reason why we have this beautiful stadium. And for them to be able to come back and us be able to show them our appreciation, it, it really means a lot to us. Thanks a lot, Coach. M-I-Z. Larissa Anderson of the Tigers up 4-2, to two, going to the bottom of the third. More than 60 alumni in the house wow. in Como today, representing six different decades, going back to the 1970s. I will say, having played softball, it is pretty cool to come back and see the generations that have, to her point, laid the groundwork for a program. Maya Dodge, first pitch swinging. Deep center to the wall, it's gone! The first SEC extra base hit of Maya Dodge's career. Larissa Anderson wanted the Tigers to jump on first pitches. How about that, coach? 5-2 Mizzou. You heard her mention in the interview the importance of the insurance, that there's a lot of ball game left, and she's so right. The fact that Dodge can step up first pitch she sees in the third inning, she sends it to the deepest part of the field. You got to believe that the atmosphere, the rockin' nature of this stadium is, is just fueling the momentum right now for the Tigers. You could feel it. It's electric right now in the stadium. Only the sixth home run that Florida has allowed. It. Nine hitter Kaylee Langer, the first to face her. We saw three speeds from Ava Brown. You're going to see four against McKenzie Wooten, the senior. It's a grad transfer, a drop ball arm. Notice the late bite, the first two pitches she throws. I think the biggest thing right now for Wooten is locating that changeup. Sometimes it can be too slow. You're able to identify it too early to reset the lower half. There it is. It misses high. Langer's a tough bat to start off with. Somebody you don't like to have, in essence, leading off an inning after Dodge's solo homer. And she's hit by the pitch. That is the third time in this series she's been hit, and the 16th time this year, top five in Division I. Bailey Langer just finds a way on base. She has reached in... Just over half of her plate appearances this year. And look at Missouri yeah. easily leading the country. It's already six free bases. It's after nine last night as well. Just not sustainable. 15 free bases in eight plus innings for Florida's pitching staff. One and one on Jenna Laird at the top of the Missouri order. Single in the first, a two run double in the second for Laird. Slice down the left field line. Otis on the run to get there. And Langer back to first with one away. You know, we talked about it a little bit, Aaron, so far in this series. Larissa Anderson wanting Missouri to be more aggressive. 
That first pitch homer from Dodge. And, and overall, she wants Mizzou to be swinging in the first three pitches when they can. I think there's a double-edged sword to this, or maybe maybe the term is two birds, one stone. With a team that struggles on the changeup the way Mizzou has, one way to defeat that is to swing early. Honnold swings early, out to center. Just enough room for the catch for Falby. Staying out of pitcher's counts, not allowing to uh, get yourself in a hole, you're going to take away some of those pitcher's pitches, which are off-speed. So they're able to assist themselves, help themselves out by hitting the hard stuff early, the hard strikes early, so that they don't even have to get to the off speed. Strike one on Gallagher, who has been hit by a pitch and knocked in a run with a single. Already Laird Honnold and Gallagher getting their third chances of the day in the third inning. <laughs> to your point about the changeup, Larissa Anderson said Matty Gallagher has been uh, the most vocal of a number of Tigers hitters, assuring her they're going to get those changeup struggles figured out. A wave and a miss. Gallagher strikes out. And the inning is over. But Maya got together with the Mississippi State and the rest of the league to honor Alex Wilcox, who was diagnosed in high school. Still played SEC softball. Played in eight games the spring of 2018 while well undergoing chemotherapy before she ultimately passed away in the summer of 2018. But such a great thing that the SEC has done these last few years, and it's spread now to eight additional schools beyond the league as well. an incredible cause honoring an amazing life that's blessed our sport but more than anything just the awareness Ava Brown the first Gator to bat in the top of the fourth Kistler and Kowalewski to follow against Sierra Harrison who's walked a couple, allowed three hits, including the first inning two-run homer off the bat of Jocelyn Erickson. But her offense rallied with a four spot in the second. Then an insurance run on Maya Dodge's home run in the third. <laughs> Marissa McCann, after her three innings of one-hit relief, last night and getting the victory and the Tigers come back in the series opener back up in the pen Brown off the end of the bat Hay looking up into that high sky and misplayed it Ava Brown reaches to lead off the fourth on a drop pop up by the freshman Abby Hay at first base This is rare for Abby Hay. She's been so good at first base, so competitive fielding this position, but this just appears to be a sun ball. Trying to block that sun with a glove, unable to be successful. It's my worst nightmare. And yeah, do you still have those oh, nightmares man. sometimes? As an outfielder, you lose sleep over that. But Hay able to bounce back on the half swing pop from Katie Kistler. Just the second error for Abby Hay. Had one uh, about a week and a half ago against Sebo on a drop tag. Just sit up straight in bed sometimes in the middle of the night. You do. You lose. Because you're so helpless in that situation. You're trying to do your best to shield with your glove. She's got the visor on or the hat on. You're doing all you can. You know it's a play you have to make. You want to know the play-by-play -play guy equivalent of that dream? You give it to me. What is it? When you show up and you realize you have no notes. The game's starting oh. and you know nothing. Or you're at the wrong field. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've had that one too. That's weird that you know that. <laughs> 0 2 on Kowalewski. I definitely had those nightmares too of still playing. Now, as an alumni, still playing and showing up to a field without the uniform or without the equipment. You're scrambling, trying to figure out how you're going to make this work. One ball, two strikes. Now you're a freshman. You were responsible for the oh. equipment bag. You forgot it. <laughs> Real nightmare fuel for all of you listening. Harrison's one two pitch. Just off the corner. Crenshaw was ready to throw it around. We have seen a few of these. And right now, Crenshaw, Crenshaw and the home plate umpire having some words, but this is a with two strikes. My goodness. My goodness, where does this miss? As a hitter, Kowalowski getting away with one. I'm not leaving that in the umpire's hands if I'm standing in the box. And it's ripped through the right side, so the Missouri frustration will only grow on a single by Kowalewski, her second hit of the series. Just her third in 26 SEC at bats, and now two Gators on. Brings the potential tying run to the plate. Looks like it's not going to be Bernard, but instead a pinch hitter, Alyssa Hovermail. Harvard Mail, the freshman from Norco, California, only had a couple of starts this year against North Florida and Lafayette all the way back in February. And in fact, this will only be her second SEC at bat. She struck out against Mississippi State in Starkville a couple of weekends ago. Big opportunity with the top of the Gators lineup waiting on deck. Two on and one out. Brown reached on the error. She's at second. And Kowalewski, the one-out single, she's at first. That'll find the seats. No balls and two strikes. Can't be especially pleasant as a freshman to get called off the bench for just a second SEC at bat. <laughs> on presumably somewhat short notice. You live for these moments, though. You live for these opportunities. And this is a this is a, a big teller for a head coach. You get your shot. Are you ready to pull the trigger? Is it going to take you watching two strikes to be comfortable to, to get the bat off the shoulder? So this is a big moment here for Hovermail. It's a good point, because obviously coaches know it's not easy to be a pinch hitter who gets only occasional opportunities. So you can impress a coach because anything you do well in this situation is just amplified because of the degree of difficulty, if you will. Well, it shows how much you're paying attention. Are you plugged into the game? Are you seeing the patterning of pitch location and pitch setup? Do you know what you're probably going to anticipate in the box before you even step foot? Another one two from Harrison. Hovermail hit and held up her swing. The bases are loaded. Florida hit batters in this series have dominated the conversation. But that could be a big HBP for the Gators. Yeah, this, this is interesting. You could hear the crowd having something to say about this hit by pitch. But I think she does keep the barrel back. That's a good side swing vantage point there. Infield comes in against the speedy Falby. You see infield pinched in. They're in front of the base pass. Both Gallagher and Laird short and second base in front of the runner's lane. And Falby's a 500 hitter with bases loaded. She's behind in the count, no balls and two strikes, and she has been in all three of her at-bats in this game. 
Managed to top a infield single to third. Back in the third inning, or only hit of the series in six trips. It's interesting because you see the infield pinched in, but outfield's pretty straight up. There's some wide open real estate between infield and outfield, and with the speed of Falby, they're just hoping that she's going to keep it on the dirt here. This also potentially informs Falby at the plate of what she may see. Up in the zone. Likely results in some fly ball opportunity here. She may see more of a change up low with the knee strike zone, especially with two strikes. And she does. That one just misses. Man, Harrison's been wanting that call all day. Two balls, two strikes. There it is at the knees. Harrison's wanted it, like you said, Aaron, and she gets it for a big second out of this fourth inning. A rare strikeout for Falby. Well, it's been a conservative zone at points, but this one, I think, falls in the favor of Harrison. She did not get the call against Kowalewski, who ended up getting the single just past Gallagher at second base. That one falls in the favor of Harrison. A tough pitch to take. Well, cometh the moment, cometh the woman, right? Skylar Wallace settles in. Well, the base is jammed and two out. Wallace struck out in the first on a rise ball, lined out hard to the right fielder Langer in the third. Another 500 bat with bases juiced. One for five with a walk and a double in the series so far. She punished Missouri in Gainesville last season. Four of eight with a homer and a triple. Drove in four. Checks her swing and did not go. According to the third base umpire, Bobby DeMeo. I mean, right now, they're concerned about the check swing. I'm concerned about the pitch location. Now, right call on the check. Didn't break the strike zone. But again, just the conservative nature of this strike zone. It's gone back and forth, both sides. Tim Walton said Skylar Wallace has the best eyes of any hitter he's ever seen. So if she knows the strike zone is a little tight, she's going to take advantage of it. And for Florida, this is the opportunity. You've got a strike in an opportunity like this. Base is loaded. They've already left three on through three innings. Harrison's 2-2 pitch. Wallace stays back but pops it up. Laird is there and the Tigers escape again. Florida leaves the by Gators head coach Tim Walton and uh, coach obviously that four run inning got away from Ava Brown a little bit. What adjustments do you want to see from especially your starters going into the finale tomorrow? Yeah, I'm not worried about tomorrow till till we get through today. You know, we just got to play a little bit better playing a little sloppy. Um, just throwing away some swings every once in a while. But you know again I I got a lot of lot of lot of uh, confidence in Ava and Keegan and you know our pitching staff. They just got to fight through this a little bit just a little bit of a kind of a mid season rut just not as not as fresh not as sharp as we have been. Some runners left on, I think, just through four. But what is it going to take, I think, for your offense to be able to cash in in those opportunities? We just look like we're guessing a little bit. Yeah. And I think the key is just being able to get a pitch, be on time for you know, the rise, spin, be on time for that, and uh, and be able to adjust. We just look like we're we're caught a little bit. But my thing is just looks. We look a little like we're guessing a little bit. Thanks a lot, Coach. Okay, thank you. Tim Walton and the Gators had the bases loaded just moments ago in the top of this inning. Couldn't cash in even with. Kendra Falby and Skyler Wallace at the plate. Those missed opportunities starting to pile up for Florida just as they did in last night's game. Kara Daly takes low for Mackenzie Wooten for ball one. Missouri actually has seven runners left on in three innings, but the Tigers have been able to push some across before stranding runners out there.
Daly into short center. Long run in for Falmy, makes the call and the sliding catch. She was playing deep, and Skylar Wallace was headed out there like she thought she might have to make a play, but Falby made the early call and got there. Well, we know the speed of Falby. What she does on the base pass also shows up defensively. She's on her horse. Immediately, she sees this ball is going to be shallow. Takes a nice instep, uses that figure four slide. You know, the, the runners left on base numbers can, they're always a little bit tricky. Because in one instance, your offense is putting itself in situations to score, and it, it doesn't always tell the whole story. You could have a team that has no runners left on, but they don't put any on to get in a situation to score. So you got to almost see it through two lenses. Two balls, one strike on Abby Hay. She has struck out and flied to right. Local kid out of Rockbridge High School in Columbia. Didn't start playing softball until her sophomore year of high school. Always played baseball growing up. Larissa Anderson said uh, she's got a few kids like that. Alex Honnold, Stefania Abrascato, also baseball players as kids. Abby Hay in her baseballing days. In fact, Hay and Abrascato were teammates on the U.S. women's youth baseball circuit. And both her players, her uh, parents rather, were Missouri athletes. Her dad, John, in baseball. Her mom, Amy, in golf. Driven to right center. Long run. Falby looks up. It's off the top of the wall. Hay holds it first with a long single. Maybe just a foot or two from a home run, but she'll settle for the one out now. Such a great approach from Abby Hay, who's caught fire on this team. Look at the lower half. She sets, resets, and it's that momentary pause of the lower half. Puts her on time with the changeup, Nate. That's been a pitch that this team has struggled with all season long. Here's the aforementioned Abrascato. Baseball background of her own. And her dad, Thomas, the head baseball coach at Clark High School in Westbury, New York, where he's won three state titles. And these two were baseball teammates growing up. Lars Anderson has to be excited. There's strike two, to your point, Aaron, about both the early attacking from Missouri we've seen in this game and hitting better against changeups because to wow. the point you see right there, the book is out on Mizzou. I mean, that's the scouting. And you know what? Larissa Anderson was honest with that as well. She goes, I, I know. I know that that is the story from Mizzou softball is they cannot hit a changeup. And as much as we can try to prepare for it, to watch film for it, to do all we can, number one, it's tough for us to get a competitive practice in right now with the amount of travel and the rest that we require just to show up and play our best ball. But two, it's a mindset. These young women have to decide that they're going to step into the box and trust a game plan. And guess who just did? Miss Abby Hay. Erickson throws one into right field. Only had one error all season. Prior to this game, she made one earlier, and that one could have been if Hay had been able to move up. But there's the uh, average for Missouri, almost 100 points off entering yeah. this series against the changeup versus everything else, according to 643 Synergy. One on, one out. Wooten's payoff. Abrascato sends it to first. There's one. Brown's throw off a hop. Kicks off of Hay. And she gallops on to third. So Florida gets the second out of the inning. But Abby Hay picks up 120 feet. And she's over at third as a potential further insurance run for the Tigers. The heads up base running from Mizzou has been a game changer this evening. It's a hot shot over to Gels and a one hop. This is a miss throw to Skylar Wallace. And where is the outfield to back up that throw? 
Otis having to get on her high horse, a late reaction to back up the miss throw. And an extra 60 feet for Abby Hay. One ball, no strikes on Julia Crenshaw. Had a single her first time. Leading off the second inning. Missouri ultimately scored four, added one more on the leadoff solo homer by Maya Dodge in the third. Crenshaw has pulled the ball along that left field line at each of her at bats. I think Natalie Touche is ready to join the broadcast based on that get up. Smack to third, handled by Kowalewski off a of bobble, and she retires Crenshaw and with her this side. Did earlier, that changeup is brand new. Yeah. If that becomes a real weapon for her, she could go even to the next level. I think this was a, an off season for Sierra Harrison, where she realized that if she wanted to go where she wanted to go as a D1 pitcher, it had to include the changeup. Corby Otis cranks it back into center, but Alex Honnold comes on for the sliding grab. Otis tattooed that right on the screws, but put it in the wrong spot. Center field putting on a show. Saw Falby make a play in center field. Now Honnold making a play in center field. That's one of the toughest catches to make is where you've got to come right up in front of your body. You're not working side to side. But you got to read that ball coming straight at you. So now Jocelyn Erickson in the cleanup spot. And she cranks one down the right field line, a fair ball into the corner. Langer plays it off the wall, but Erickson is into second standing. A homer and a double for Jocelyn Erickson this afternoon. And the Gators now have blooping a blast away. Check out how tight she is on the plate. Her upper body is literally hanging over the strike zone. You can see it almost saws her off, but that lower hand power of Jocelyn Erickson is why she's so dangerous. She muscles that one up the line. Reagan Walsh now. How hard is it when you're standing that close to the plate to get the hands through on a pitch that far inside? Well, you're likely going to see that location, right? That's something that Jocelyn Erickson has to know. If I'm crowding the plate, I'm likely going to get challenged on that side of a plate, especially if a pitcher like Harrison is comfortable throwing to both sides, and she does. That wasn't a bad pitch. Jocelyn's Walsh. just such a strong arm. Down the left field line, it could have been playable for Dodge in the end. But a tricky play right up, up against the uh, wall there next to the bullpen. That's tough. On your home field, you want to know exactly where you are in space. And I think that's a catchable ball if she can find that wall early. You can see that she starts to put on the brakes right here. She puts on the brakes instead of going ahead, finding the wall, get to the wall, park it, and then locate where that ball is to make the catch. It's a tough Tough ball. So one ball and one strike on Reagan Walsh, who's having a meeting with her head coach, Tim Walton. Praised her for becoming a better and better competitor. Alongside dramatically raising her offensive numbers every year in a Gators uniform. She and Jocelyn Erickson came from the same youth system, played together growing up. Harrison's one and one delivery. And Tim Walton said the biggest reason Walsh has become a better competitor is she's been more even keel, able to handle something that frustrates her mid-game, like a bad call or a mistake. He used a phrase I haven't heard before. He said it sometimes people focus on trying hard, and I want them to try easy. Two and two. And Walsh has done a good job with the sports psychology people. Developed a routine and stayed consistent with it. That's another thing that's important to Tim Walton. He thinks that that routine element makes a big difference. Two-two. There's the changeup down and away. 
We talked about how reliable Harrison has been. Imagine if she'd been able to locate that changeup just a little bit better at the knees. She has wanted that pitch, like you said, all afternoon long. There's been times when she gets the call and times when she hasn't. This one will get well out of play. Walsh, to her credit, has had some clutch hits even last year for Florida. She had a couple of walk-off hits in SEC games last April, including a three-run homer against Ole Miss. Wasn't a walk-off, but had effectively the game-winning hit of the Saturday night series opener against LSU last weekend. Big three-run shot of the sixth inning. Gave Florida the lead. Almost 100 pitches now for Sierra Harrison in the circle. That's who's warming up. Pinnell, Touche, starting to move in the pen. I think at one time or another, we've seen all four of the available Missouri pitchers up and throwing. McCann and Krings have been in the pen at one time or another as well. Another payoff to Reagan Walsh. And she works a walk. Walsh aboard for the first time in the ball game. Two Gators on with one out. And Ava Brown, who homered last night, is due to bat. That's a huge at bat from Reagan Walsh. The fact that she can work that so deep into the count. We saw her battle after Finney. It's like a frisbee out of her hand. The way that she's able to have such tight revolution to spin the ball late life through the zone. A couple different speeds you'll see out of this hand. A very dominant changeup. McCann only allowed one hit. In fact, one Florida base runner in her three innings of relief last night. It was a two-out, seventh-inning double off the bat of Skylar Wallace. Then, to be fair, as we showed you at the very top of the show, Corby Otis hit a wall scraper to left field for the final out. We'll see how McCann deals with this now because she's moving, starting last weekend against Arkansas, into a much bigger role than what she's had so far in her freshman campaign. The youngster who was born in Columbia, lived here until she was 12 before moving to Arizona, now returning to play her college softball. One one. Up high for ball two. But to that point, it's not only the mental responsibility of having the bigger role and the team counting on her, but also she might see some of these Florida hitters not just two or three times, but even five or six times over a weekend if she pitches two or three times. Two and two. That's the challenge of conference play is that it's not just your best ball right out of the gate when you see each other for the first time. It's how can you sustain that success over 72 hours? How do you bring it three separate times after knowing each other's every move? Two on, one out. McCann's 2 2 pitch. Brown turns on it down the left field line, but hooked it foul. Brown has walked and reached on an error today. One out of four with that second inning homer to center last night in the series. Change up, strike three called. Locked her up for a big second out. Such a wicked change up. Hope you're buckled in. You're going to see a lot more of this pitch. So dirty, low in the zone. It's perfect location. Buckles the knees of Ava Brown. She knew it. And now big at bat for the senior, Katie Kistler, who has struggled in the SEC. She has a couple of pop-ups so far today. 0 for 5 in the series. You heard Tim Walton mention the guessing game. They get through the lineup twice. They start to figure out 
Sierra Harrison so that they can move away from the educated guessing at the plate and then boom, you've got another arm that steps in the circle that has just as dominant of a changeup, if not more dominant, more seasoned of an off-speed pitch. The guessing game starts all over. Florida has stranded seven runners already in the game, including the bases loaded. Just in the fourth inning. That was when they loaded him up with one out, with the top of the order coming up. Kendra Felby strikeout, Skyler Wallace pop up. Two on with one out in this inning. But Missouri a strike away from escaping again, courtesy of Marissa McCann. Two-strike offering. And of course, it's hard luck for Florida because Corby Otis smoked that line drive leading off this inning, just hit it right at Alex Honnold. Otherwise, the Gators could really be in business. They probably already have a run across in this inning. Off speed stays high, one and two. Yeah, two hard hit balls back to back. One, two. Into center. Honnold over, and the inning is complete. Nine stranded for Florida in five innings. Maya Dodge, first pitch, swinging it, snagged by Wooten. Are you kidding me, Mackenzie Wooten? <laughs> backhanded it next to her left hip. Look at this. This is one of those look what I found plays. Buzz the tower right back at her. She tries to just get her glove in front of it, I think out of protection, and ends up catching it. This is interesting. Coach Tim Walton now calling in the entire. For Florida, after a one pitch out on the dodge liner, back to Whoop. There's a strike on Missouri's number nine hitter, Kaylee Langer. The freshman Miller, southpaw from Orlando, hasn't gotten a lot of opportunities. Pitched only three innings since March the 2nd including an inning and a third on Wednesday in that midweek loss for the Gators to South Florida. Langer lost her bat on a floater into short left center that snagged by Wallace. Kaylee Langer's bat on the follow through ended up caught in the screen behind home plate and had to be retrieved by Jenna Laird. Two down. Miller just making her second SEC appearance through a third of an inning against Mississippi State a couple of week weekends ago rather allowed three runs. The most immediate change right now for Mizzou is seeing this ball out of the left side. Just a different side of the body, different release point. Don't forget about Tennessee and Mississippi State in Starkville. If you're looking for that game, it's starting over on the digital side. SEC Network Plus. Watch ESPN on the app. Mississippi State, a 9-1 win. Laird through the left side of a set. She's aboard with two down. That's the third hit for Laird in the ballgame. But how about that statement last night from the Bulldogs? 9-1 run rule over what for a while looked like certainly the hottest, maybe the best team in the SEC in the Tennessee Lady Vols. Yeah, not just a win, a five-inning win, a run rule victory against, as you said, I think the hottest team right now in the conference. Strike to Alex Honnold. And you'd imagine it'll be a great scene down there in Starkville today. The teal all around the SEC for former Mississippi State Bulldog Alex Wilcox. Honnold out in front. And not quite a true change up out of the hand of Miller, more of an off speed, kind of like an off speed curve from this lefty. 
And Honnold waves over another one. Erickson completes the strikeout down to first. Three. Ariel Kowalewski is one for two. Had a singular last time in the fourth. Just her third hit in 26 SEC at bats in her freshman campaign. Marissa McCann has come out of the Missouri bullpen with authority. Three nearly perfect innings to finish the game last night. And Missouri's come from behind win. She retired the first two she faced this afternoon, including a strikeout. Cans 1 2. Kowalewski stays alive again. Bernard, the nine hitter, would be due up. Looks like it's going to be Bailey Goddard to pinch hit instead. And then the top of the order in Falby. It's interesting to see this Mizzou battery. Whole pitching staff still old school with the call card on the wrist. I've seen a lot of teams move to the electronic one way communication device. Lifted to shallow left center. Hoddled the call and the catch. One away. What would be the rationale you think for that? I, your guess is probably as good as mine. I think the only thing I can think of is that you remove the ability for any error, any type of malfunction. I have seen that with teams where the one-way communication sometimes doesn't go as planned. But you can see the cue card there. We saw a little bit of miscommunication even with Harrison and Crenshaw in the circle having to bring out Larissa Anderson to make sure that all the cards were correct. They all had the same card. I was going to say they managed to have some technical difficulties yeah, exactly. even with the low-tech option. Old, even with the old-school way. But, yeah, most of the most of the teams I've covered this year has been the, the introduction of the one-way communication device. It, it looks almost like a watch that they wear that sends a message to all the defense of exactly what pitch is being called. So here is the aforementioned Goddard, redshirt senior from Orange Park. Waits on the first pitch and floats it to Laird. Quickly two away. And McCann has retired all four Gators she's faced. You can see all the defense there. They also have the cue cards on. It, it helps from a defensive alignment standpoint to know what pitch is on the way. You can already see the defense. You can already see the defense is starting to move around, pinching in based on Falby being at the plate, knowing that the speed is there. Chop toward third and foul. But two, if you see any defensive shifts, if you see the 5-6 hole being pinched or the 3-4 hole, or maybe your middle infield plays more up the middle of the field, typically that's based on pitch calling. Where are you anticipating this being hit? See how reliant Florida has been on the top of its lineup this afternoon. Ball be way late. 0 oh 2. She had an infield single in the third, has also bounced back to the circle and struck out looking. Coaches talk about low heart rate a lot, consistent heart rate. Marissa McCann, even as a freshman, taking on the bigger and bigger role in SEC play these last couple of weeks, has looked unflappable. Another 0-2. To Laird, has to hurry, gets there in time. Smoothly done by the all SEC Capture the SEC's first ever World Series title. Nine Eastern, eight Central, SEC Network and the ESPN app coming up on Monday night. Nate Gatter, Aaron Miller back with you from Como, where Missouri leads 5-2 to the home sixth. Gallagher, Daly, and Hay, 3-4-5 and five scheduled for the Tigers against left-hander Olivia Miller.
Got the final two outs. Gave up a base hit to Jenna Laird in the fifth. Gallagher has been on twice. She was plunked in the first inning. Not get a run with a single in the second. Softly back toward the circle. Knocked down by Miller. Has to hurry on the backhand shovel. And she's fired up. Talked about Ava Brown fielding her <laughs> position. This wasn't bad athleticism for Miller either. Well, it's tough being a lefty as well. You could see she was trying to turn the body around. A really good recovery from Miller. That's a tough tough shovel across the body. Anything on that side of a left-handed pitcher is tough. They got to turn a 180 with the feet to be able to throw at first. Here's Kara Daly, who has walked twice and fly to center. Hasn't quite been able to replicate her game two stardom from the series against Florida last year. Bounce to second, taken cleanly by Mia Williams. And two down. Daily a season ago in Gainesville had three extra base hits in the second game of the series, a 7-3 Missouri victory, including a homer. But Olivia Miller has made quick work of the Tigers so far in the sixth. And she deals now with Abby Hay, who has reached safely in 10 straight games. In fact, all 10 she's played so far in her college career. Has played first base with number 36, Abby Hay. Strike out a fly to right at a single on Hay's card this afternoon. Here, the exertion from Miller spotted it well. There's always hope for a high scoring team. Gators certainly are that. And additionally, they'll have two, three, and four. Wallace, Otis, and Erickson schedule the bat in the seventh inning. Yeah, and the meat of the order for Florida. We've we talked about it all the way back in the open in this matchup. The fact that Florida is known for the late life and the late fight. All the way down to the last pitch. A, a wild ending to a Tennessee Gator matchup came down to that last pitch. A drop third strike for Skylar Wallace. Legs it out to first. I mean, they really never say die. They keep their foot on the gas until there's nothing left. Both Florida runs came back in the first inning on a two-run Jocelyn Erickson homer. Second time in as many games this weekend. Hay through the right side, a second hit for the freshman. Two out base runner from Missouri with Stefania Abrascato do up. Well, two for two day for Abby Hay. Has looked so good from a timing perspective. We saw her successful on the changeup back in the fourth inning, and she continues to take that late approach here in the sixth. Sees the ball deep, hits it where it's thrown. Abrascato turns on it through the same hole. Hay had to kick up over the softball as it bounced through the right side. Back-to-back -back freshman singles. Sets up a two-out opportunity for the junior Julia Crenshaw. Looks like Larissa Anderson is going to make a change with a pinch runner. Claire Kahalen getting ready to come on for Abby Hay and she will represent a potential insurance run for Missouri in scoring position with two outs. To Halen and Danielle Blackston came off the bench for Missouri as pinch runners last night and scored the tying and go-ahead runs in Missouri's four-run sixth inning. Seven different Tigers now have hits in the game, including Crenshaw. 
Single and a run scored back in the second. She has since fly to left and grounded to third. Pretty vocal crowd we've had today. Just another benefit of setting a program record with more than 3,600 <laughs> folks in the house. No kidding. Lobbying the umpires. Off speed and Crenshaw held up two and one. Miller's three and one delivery to Crenshaw. Roll over to third. Gobbled up by Kowalewski, who ends the inning with a right foot. Arby Otis and Jocelyn Erickson against the Southpaw Pinnell, who has not allowed an earned run in SEC play. Eight strikeouts, one walk, just two hits against her in six innings. Overall numbers for the year, seven saves. Larissa Anderson called her the most defined closer Mizzou has had since Eli Daniel. She's embraced that role, too. Loves to come in and slam the door shut. And Coach Anderson gave her credit for that. She said, you know, we need buy-in to those roles because Missouri needs a staff approach. They don't have that one pitcher or even those two pitchers who are going to dominate the innings the way Florida does. They need everybody to contribute. Two and zero on Skyler Wallace has just one hit in this series. Had just one against LSU last weekend in Gainesville. Still has the three walks, but by her standards, not what she's used to. Her only hit in this series, though, was a seventh inning double last night. Good change up, two and two. Yeah, I had that one highlighted in my notes too. Disg quote unquote, disgusting change up in any count, and it is filthy. Two two. Wallace pokes it to short. Laird is there, one away. Frustrations continue for Skyler Wallace. Series finale coming up at 2 o'clock Central, 3 Eastern tomorrow. Interesting to see if she can bounce back, shake off some of those disappointments from the last few games. Pinnell spins it in for strike one on Otis. It's a good take early for Otis. Not a pitch you want to hit in an 0-0 count. Even a little low, knee high. 0-2. But you can't watch that one. If you're not sitting and looking for the changeup, you're looking for that pitch right there, and she doesn't hunt it. All the way to the screen, 1-2. and two. Florida opened the series last night by scoring in each of the first three innings. Since then, just two runs for the Gators over the last nine and a third. And they both came on the Erickson homer in the first inning today. Two balls and two strikes on Otis. Don't forget, we'll be sending you right out to Starkville. Where game two of the Tennessee-Mississippi State Series is already underway. And the Lady Vols appear to have taken exception to their 9-1 five-inning defeat last night. They're up 3-0 in the early going. To third, Daly scoops it and retires Otis. Two away, and Jocelyn Erickson is Florida's last hope. Of course, the Gators are chasing Tennessee atop the SEC standings. If Missouri holds on to take this game, the Gators would drop, at least for the moment, behind Texas A&M and be a game and a half, two in the loss column behind Tennessee. This is 
just been a complete game for Missouri. Pitching was lights out. Harrison looked strong in the circle. McCann coming in with a strong changeup. Erickson, foul ground, and it drops. Look at Matty Gallagher laying out. That's one of those that seems like a good idea at the time. I think the way she stood up, she's thinking maybe it wasn't worth it. One ball, two strikes on Erickson. Taylor Pinnell, calm as ever, has come out of the Missouri bullpen against Wallace, against Otis, against Erickson. The first two retired, and Erickson down to Florida's final strike. Erickson has not been retired today. Had the homer in the first, a walk in the third, a double in the fifth. The biggest thing for Mizzou, too, offensively, is that they build on what they learned in game one, is to be patient at the plate, but to be aggressive early if the strike is there. They took what was given today, and then they built off of that with a little production on their own. And we talked about both at one time or another. It feels like the message has been received in yeah. terms of being ready to hit early in counts and in adjusting to that changeup a little bit better. I think Florida's got the work cut out for him. Tim Walton hit the nail on the head of just guessing at the plate. Another one off the screen from Erickson. You can feel it just energetically even with this team. A little bit deflated, Maybe the lack of confidence recently, hit a couple bumps in the road the past few weekends, just not the powerhouse of a Gator offense that we've known for so many years. Thirty-six oh seven, a program record in the building this afternoon in Columbia. Another Pinnell payoff. Erickson pops it up. Short right. For the first time in a decade, the Missouri Tigers.